Welcome to LH Tips. My name is Alex Hughes, and today we're going to run through the DMX camera option that is available in media and above dongle licenses. So we've got a uh, an L8 installation here set up. We've got a little show running, and while being able to navigate the compass and use the four different presets that we can build is good. So if I put one here, and we use another one here. And then we have, let's say this one, let's say this one's a building one. So we'll set the ambient light. While these four presets are good and handy to be able to click through, it's not the greatest if we're doing a video recording because, you know, after a couple of coffees, my, uh, my camera skills aren't that good. Thankfully for uh, media and above users, you can use what's called the DMX camera and basically you take control of all these parameters. So to set that up, we go into DMX, we click on our compass, and where it says DMX in, we then give it a universe and a channel. So I've got mine patched universe 3, starting at 100. And we can see that there's a channel listing of what's in each channel, and we can see that it's a 22, uh, fixture, a 22 channel fixture. So for MA and for HOG, there's a fixture file available, but for other platforms, you may have to build one yourself. Once you've got it patched in, just click apply and click save. And then to enable it, we click in. Now, obviously, I'm going to show you, because I'm an MA person, how we do this on MA. So I've got a nice little view up here. So if you've downloaded the fixture file off of, uh, off of the MA fixture share website that we've created, we can see that we've got a LC cam fixture, which we refer to as 100,041, because that's the number that I was using when I built this file. And now if we call up that fixture, 141, and we go back into L8, we can see that we've got the camera sort of positioned downwards. So we don't really want that. So Oh, my encoder bar. Oh, there we go. My encoder bar has appeared. Perfect. So with the fixture selected, we'll run through a couple of the parameters. We've got dimmer, which controls your ambient light. And your fixture file may differ, but this is the uh, the standard MA one. We've got pan and tilt, which is fairly self-explanatory, and tilt. We've got roll. And with roll, what we can do is if we set it to a certain value, we'll see that uh, it'll slowly do a pan and a sweep. So if you don't want to do a full camera animation, you can just leave it to the roll to do. But uh, if we turn off the roll, we'll see that it's going to snap back to where it was before. Moving on, we've got color. So we can tweak our gamma settings if we so desire dynamically. Then we've got RGB control. And what our GB control does is it affects the ambient light. So if we bring up the uh, ambient light that we've got, we can actually tweak it so that there's a, a certain aura around and we can see that the color is changing here when I'm uh, modifying them here. Most of the time you'll leave this on white, but if you, uh, if you want to set sort of, you know, a, a rare, very red or moody scene, you can do that and just dial a little bit in and still use the ambient light to your advantage. Most of the time, you're going to want to leave those defaulted. We've then got what MA is calling brightness. We call in, M in L8 world exposure. And then we move on to beam where we've got our iris, which is a full iris that we can iris down. We move on to focus where we've got what they call zoom or we in L8 world call field of view, so it's really good. You can flatten things down, you can create some really dynamic camera effects with it. Moving on, in control, we've got smoke and wind. So we can have complete control over the smoke and wind. So if you've got a really punchy scene where you want to punch some haze in, we can do that dynamically. And then moving on to my favorite bit, X and Y parameters. So we've got full 16-bit control, so we can position the camera. So I'm going to turn the ambient light off now. And we're going to get a nice tight shot on our artist. 
So we're going to adjust our x and y and then jump in again to do the z parameter. We're going to get quite up and close with the person. And you can, of course, modify the fixture file in your lighting console of choice so that your encoders sit in a slightly different fashion. I'm going to uh, jump into full screen mode here. We're just going to get nice and close up to this person here we've got on stage. We're going to look at the shot and we're going to decide, you know, we we want a lot of haze, but we don't we don't really want much wind movement. So we're going to turn the wind off and then we're going to store this as a cue on our lighting desk. And then the next one we want to do is we'll bring up the same fixture again. We'll grab our shapers. We'll zoom out a bit. And we get a nice crowd shot. Chop our uh, intensity. And we're going to store that as Q2 in our lighting desk. If I call up the Q list and we run it, We can see that we're running it, and I'm triggering it, and it's just snapping. And while that's nice, what we can do here is we can add in a nice fade. So let's add in a five second fade via my lighting desk, and I'll trigger that. And we can see we get a nice push in motion. And we can continue to add more and more steps onto this process as we need. So that's the DMX camera inside of L8. The version that we've used here is L8 version 60 at the time of recording. This is this DMX camera option is available in versions media and above and does not include the CE versions. Thanks for watching. If you've got any further questions, feel free to check out the links located in the description of the video, as well as the documentation that is available with the L8 software. My name is Alex Hughes, and thanks for watching.